I stopped by just to tell you I love you. And since you're not at home, I'm writing it to you. Elena Poniatowska, El Recado. Hello again. Let's continue our Servantine journey through history's greatest novel. Trifaldi's story is also a summation of our novel's long list of problematic relationships between men like Grisostomo, Cardenio, Fernando, Lotario, Anselmo, Biedma, Don Luis, Eugenio, and Don Quixote, and their female love objects, Marcela, Lustinda, Dorotea, Camila, Zoraida, Doña Clara, Leandra, and Dulcinea, as well as several important pairs yet to come in part two. The names Archipiela and Antonomasia connote something transcendental and climactic, alluding respectively to the island that Sancho will rule and the list of perfectly beautiful women that drive Cervantes' plots. Moreover, there's a paradoxical overstatement here involved in Antonomasia, which is the figure of speech that turns a proper name into an archetype, or vice versa. This would be like calling an everyman character Mr. Generic. Did you know, antonomasia is a rhetorical figure that consists of alluding to someone by way of a quality instead of a proper name, or deploying the proper name instead of the quality that name represents. For example, using the apostle to refer to Saint Paul, or a Nero to refer to a cruel person. The concluding passages of chapter 38 describe the love affair between Antonomasia and Clavijo. Antonomasia is another epic beauty of such great perfection in her beauty, and everyone falls in love with her. With this beauty, there fell in love an infinite number of princes. Clavijo is a seducer, confident in his youth, in his gallantry, and in his many talents and abilities. Clavijo also plays the guitar, writes poetry, and dances. Finally, he has another talent. Like our crazy Hidalgo, he knew how to fashion bird cages such that he could have lived off that alone. Note that this odd economic detail is Clavijo's ultimate skill. Later, Trifaldi will point out that the problem facing the lovers is inequality. Clavijo is a poor knight, again, like Don Quixote, and Antonomasia, the heiress of a kingdom. As in so many of Cervantes' love stories, Clavijo uses Trifaldi as his go-between to seduce Antonomasia. Note how his poetry and song have their effect not on the damsel he desires, but on Trifaldi herself. Note also how this detail is what makes the chivalric tale overtly political, for here we find Cervantes' clearest reference to Plato's Republic, the origin of Western political philosophy. Trifaldi laments that she fell for Clavijo's verses, and so she embraces Plato's disdain for poets. I have come to believe that poets should be banished from good and well-ordered republics just as Plato counseled. But she then shifts the true blame onto those who consume poetry. They, however, are not to blame, but rather the simpletons who praise them and the stupid girls who believe them. This comic touch suggests Cervantes' antagonism towards censorship and his defense of artistic freedom. It also suggests that Plato is at issue in Don Quixote in ways that are far more important than the philosopher's supposed hatred of poetry. Finally, we learn that Trifaldi served as go-between in the relations between Clavijo and Antonomasia. The young man visits Antonomasia's room often although the princess is careful to make him marry her. Quixotic Mission Which classical political theorist expresses grave doubts about music and poetry? A. Plato B. Xenophon C. Cicero Correct answer A. Plato This recalls Don Fernando's seduction of Dorotea in chapter 28 of part 1. Unlike all the other love stories of our novel, however, here the young woman's pregnancy is an explicit problem that requires a formal contract sanctioned by a vicar. A certain swelling of the belly of Antonomasia, whose fear made the three of us confer, and it was determined that before the unfortunate deposit should come to light, 
Don Clavijo should ask for Antonomasia's hand in marriage before the vicar, this in keeping with a document that the princess had written agreeing to become his wife, which I had conceived with all my ingenuity and which had such a binding strength that not even those of Samson could break it. Literary form often signals literary function. Note how Cervantes uses a complex kind of theugma here. The strength of the contract is carried over to the plural pronoun those, which mean the strengths of the biblical Samson. Finally, we have to tie the grammar back together again in order to understand that the final pronoun it refers to the document. This is not accidental wordplay. This kind of private marriage contract was banned by the Council of Trent, and as he did with Dorotea in part one, Cervantes again dissents from that ruling. Sancho concludes the chapter by granting all of this universal relevance. So there are also court clerks in Candaya and poets and love poems, according to which I can swear that I imagine the world is the same everywhere. That's all for now. Keep reading. The story only gets better in the coming chapters. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Pan.